out of the four largest financial institutions are nearly 80% bigger than before we bailed them out because they were too big to fail. Well, sort of. We didn't bail out all the big banks, but the biggest US banks are just as big, if not bigger, than they were before the crisis in 2008. JP Morgan Chase is 75% bigger than it was in 2006. Bank of America, 50%. Wells Fargo, four times bigger. Only Morgan Stanley and Citigroup are slightly smaller than they were. During the height of the crisis, the relatively healthier banks ended up buying the failing banks as a way of rescue. And these rescues were backed, in some cases, by the government. You can deal with these adjustments. Insulate Main Street from Wall Street. JP Morgan bought Washington Mutual and Bear Stearns. Bank of America got Countrywide and Merrill Lynch. Wells Fargo acquired Wachovia, a rival that was actually bigger in size. We've had hundreds of rules and regulations in the US and around the world to make sure that the taxpayer is not on the hook next time around. Capital at the biggest five banks, on average, is 6%, which is twice as much as it was before the crisis. But it's still minuscule compared to historic levels. Within one year, my administration will break these institutions up. Eight years after the fall of Lehman Brothers, too big to fail is clearly still alive. We need to repeal and replace Dodd-Frank. What we ought to do is raise the capital requirements so banks aren't too big. There are plenty of opinions as to why and how to deal with it, but one thing is for sure. Risk in the financial system is still unknown and can suddenly pop up. Nobody can be sure that the dominoes won't start falling again like they did in 2008. And with the banks even bigger now, the American taxpayer may be asked once again to pick up the pieces.